Here are a few facts about dinosaurs you may not know. Number 8. Forget about it. If you've never seen Jurassic Park, or if you have seen it and still think cloning dinosaurs is a good idea, I've got news for you. It's most likely never gonna happen. According to a study published in the Royal Society, it would be, quote, highly improbable to clone dinosaurs. And DNA apparently has a half-life of 521 years. Furthermore, microorganisms speed up the rate of decay and reactions with water result in bond degradation. Long story short, the team of scientists led by Morton Allentoft at the University of Copenhagen and Michael Bunce at Murdoch University in Perth, Australia, concluded that DNA is virtually unreadable after about one and a half million years. Since dinosaurs have been gone for roughly 66 million years, the odds of cloning a dinosaur would appear to be virtually impossible. If dinosaurs were able to be recreated, would you guys be for or against it? Let us know in the comment section and do us a big favor and hit that like button. Number seven, Velociraptors misrepresented. If you really want to get nitpicky, there are several things wrong with Jurassic Park. For starters, they really should have named it Cretaceous Park, since most of the dinosaurs featured in the film were around and during that period. Of course, that just doesn't roll right off the tongue, but the most obvious error is the portrayal of Velociraptors. The raptors in the film are depicted as large pack hunters with advanced intelligence. In reality, the velociraptors were probably about the size of a turkey, and there's never been any evidence that they were all that smart. While they probably had a higher brain size to body mass ratio than many of their peers, their intelligence is overstated in that movie. I mean, they probably could not have figured out door handles, even if they had door handles back then. The Utah Raptors, however, were probably about the size of the film version of Velociraptors. Also, many experts think that Velociraptors would have had feathers, which they definitely didn't have in the film. However, let's not let these details take away from Jurassic Park, because that movie was definitely a classic. Number 6. Not all of them were. When we see dinosaurs depicted in the media, be it books, films, or museum exhibits, they're seen as these gargantuan reptiles who wreaked havoc on everything. Indeed, many of them were very large creatures, but not all of them were huge. For example, the Lizothosaurus was probably about six feet long and shorter than most humans. Or better yet, take a look at what's believed to be one of the smallest dinosaurs, the Cobsognathus, lived roughly 150 million years ago in present-day Europe. Based on the fossils of two skeletons, paleontologists estimate that these guys were about the size of chickens, which really isn't all that big. This dinosaur was also believed to have feathers, which is a much different image than scaled creatures we have in our minds usually. Other dinosaurs might have been even smaller. The Senognathus, for example, was believed to have weighed in at just three pounds while measuring a measly two feet long. Then there was the Microraptor, a tiny feathered dinosaur with four wings that was just about two feet long. These guys were likely nocturnal hunters who preyed mainly on fish. Oh, and also check this out. The Parvicursor was this tiny little reptile that lived about 72 million years ago. Although they were fast, they were tiny. At just 15 inches long, they only weighed about five to six ounces. Long story short, not all dinosaurs were huge. Number five, domination is the only nation. We've been around for just a very short amount of time on Earth. In that span, however, we've become top dog on the planet. We've learned to control fire, to build giant civilizations, to adapt to use tools, and of course, we've even come up with Netflix and chill. So yeah, we've done pretty well. But for the sake of reference, keep this in mind. Dinosaurs roamed the Earth for roughly 165 million years. That's way longer than us. During their tenure, they more or less ruled everything. Early evidence of dinosaurs suggests they date back to roughly 243 million years ago. And while an exact date is hard to nail down, they became the dominant species during the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event 201 million years ago. After that, dinosaurs ruled the planet. On the geological timescale, this period was known as the Mesozoic Era. 
which itself is divided into three periods spanning between 165 and 177 million years, known as the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous periods. It was at the end of this last period that an asteroid pummeled the Earth, wiping out 75% of the species on the planet, including pretty much all the dinosaurs. But for now, as a point of reference, they were living on Earth far longer than they've been extinct, and a heck of a lot longer than we've been around. Number four, warming things up. Sauropods are one of the most iconic dinosaurs in pop culture. Living mainly during the Triassic and Jurassic periods, these large herbivores populated much of the planet. And while they went extinct along with many of their peers, they left a rather um, interesting legacy behind. In a nutshell, their farts warmed the entire planet. With many subspecies among their ranks, different sauropods grew anywhere from 20 feet to 130 feet long, often reaching heights of close to 20 feet high, and in the case of the Supersaurus, 60 feet tall. These guys were pretty big, and they were vegetarians. So, given their large size, their farts were pretty powerful. The experts calculated that during the height of their reign, sauropods were collectively pumping out about 520 million tons of methane per year. That would put them on pace with our current greenhouse gas emission. They just didn't have Al Gore to make movies about it. Experts theorized that they would have warmed the planet by about 33 degrees. Interestingly enough, fossil records do indicate that the planet was much warmer back then as evidenced by the lack of polar ice caps. It's worth noting that as sauropods became less common, the planet continued to become warmer. So whether or not they were solely to blame for the warm planet remains unclear. Number three, extinction level event. This event is known scientifically as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event or the Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction. We're just gonna call it the KT event from here on out. But the news here is that when it occurred 66 million years ago, and it was the end of the dinosaur's reign, the scientists speculate that an asteroid barreled into the planet, causing a sudden mass extinction. Anywhere from 75 to 80% of the planet species were wiped off the face of the Earth, and a new era, the Cenozoic era, was ushered in. By the way, you, me, and every person who has ever lived are part of this era. When this event occurred, dinosaurs were pretty much finished. The few remaining survivors were the ancestors to modern-day crocodiles, which makes sense, and birds, which is rather surprising. In fact, chickens are considered to be very closely related to dinosaurs. According to a paper published in BMC Genomics, chickens, along with turkeys, have experienced fewer genomic changes than any other archosaur. Archosaurs are a scientific grouping of animals that consist of dinosaurs, birds, and crocodilians. Since birds are considered to be descendants of dinosaurs, scientists can glean useful information about dinosaurs from the genetic data of birds. For a while, it was assumed that the extinction was a process. The planet was warming, then getting really cold, disease was widespread, and egg-eating mammals started to become a thing, so dinosaurs had a hard time repopulating. But by the 1980s, the idea that a massive asteroid rocked the planet, sending huge amounts of debris into the atmosphere, became the accepted theory. While some paleontologists dispute this theory, this is what the credible fossil records show. Number two, the largest one. Well, we talked about the smallest dinosaur ever, so how about the largest dinosaur ever? The Patagotitan is the biggest dinosaur ever discovered. Well, the fossils were discovered. You know what I mean. It was first discovered in 2013 when an Argentinian farmer stumbled upon some fossilized bone on his property. The bones were so big, it took two weeks to uncover them. But when they were eventually unearthed, it was estimated that the bones belonged to a type of sauropod that stood 130 feet tall and weighed 69 tons, or roughly 138,000 pounds. That would just be insane to see in real life if we were gonna be honest here. Of course, it's been pretty well established that sauropods were big dinosaurs. Some sauropods supposedly were so big that their tail whipped may have cracked the sound barrier, creating sonic booms. Sauropods could have used their long, powerful tails for defensive purposes and communication, among other functions. The whole supersonic speed idea comes from Nathan Mirvoid, the founder and CEO of Intellectual Ventures. Using a computer model and a scaled-down model, he's been trying to prove his theory. Quick question, do you think dinosaurs existed? Let us know in the comments. Number one, 
they actually existed. This seems like a crazy thing to have to even address, but yes, dinosaurs did in fact exist. We have the fossil records to prove it. To entertain the idea that they did not exist, you would have to accept that scientists have made up evidence and staged a fossil record just to fool the public into thinking giant reptiles once roamed the Earth for their own amusement. Anyways, much like the resurgence of the flat Earth theory, it seems that there are still many people out there who don't believe dinosaurs existed. For example, there's a group called Christians Against Dinosaurs. As their name would suggest, this is a group of Christians who've set out to prove that dinosaur fossils are a hoax. On their website, they claim to welcome debate and to encourage reasonable discussions about opposing theories. In practice, they systematically question the intellectual integrity of the scientific community and accuse them of fabricating evidence for the singular purpose of attacking Christianity. Anyways, humans have been discovering fossils since pretty much the, the beginning of recorded history. Like any other scientific discipline, as time progresses, our understanding of fossilization and paleontology has improved, and we now understand what dinosaurs were. Using radiometric dating, paleontologists can theorize when these reptiles existed. While the term dinosaur wasn't coined until the 1800s, and humans didn't have a great understanding of them before that, advances in science and technology have allowed us to carefully study fossils and from these scientific studies develop theories that are widely accepted to be accurate. So, while it should go without saying that everyone is entitled to their opinions and thoughts, we think it's safe to say dinosaurs did exist. Here's what's next. See, where it gets occasionally caught in fishing nets. It also goes by the name Pelican Gulper, and probably the coolest one of them all, the Umbrella Mouth Gulper. The Gulper eel typically grows to about two and a half feet in length. This thing is mostly famous because of its large mouth, which is much larger than its body. The mouth is...